Hello everyone, we're in Pirkei Avot, first parrot mission at 16, we're almost wrapped up here. And also, please feel free to share this video if you wish with the people you think might be interested. Okay, so, says the Mishnah, Rabban Gamliel Haya Omer, Rabban Gamliel would say, Aselech Rav, make for yourself a rabbi, Vihistalek min hasafek, and avoid doubt, Valtar Laser Omadot, and do not make a habit of tithing by guesswork. Okay, so three teachings we're used to that, but what we're not used to was this introduction, namely, for this entire uh, this entire parak we keep seeing before we're introduced to the new Tanaim, we see Hilda Shamai Hilda Shamai Kimblu Mehem, right? Shmayafev Talon Kimblu Mehem. Every time before we're introduced to the new uh, to the new uh, teachers, we say they receive this as a tradition. And so Yen Levanon comments on this, and he says like this, he's like, you know, we might think that Rabban Gamliel is coming to be a Mechad or something. He didn't get this from a Sora, and he's coming to teach us something new. That wasn't taught before. And Yen Levanon says, no, that's not what's going on. How does he know? It's very interesting. He says that actually Rabban Gamliel and Shimon, and Shimon Bno and Rabban Shimon Gamliel, etc., are actually teaching us the words of Shammai. Let's just say we know that we pass on like Hillel, right? Hillel over Shammai. Um, but there's still some teachings that, that go according to Shammai. And until we get to, uh, to Pirkei Avot 2, Mishnah 8, like per the second parak, Mishnah 8, um, this is all an elaboration of, of Shammai's teachings. And if we actually look at uh, 2 8, how does that begin? Rabban Yochanan ben Zakai Kibel me Hillel ve umi Shammai. But. But before and before we get to that point, for all those Mishnahs until then, it just kind of opens with uh, with whoever's teaching the Mishnah, and so Yen Levan kind of comes and opens this up for us because it's really very it's jarring. You know, we have this like this tradition, and then suddenly you're up and saying something interesting. Like, well, where did he get that from? How does he know that? The answer is he knows it from Shammai. What's also interesting, says Yen Levan, is he's saying that um the the final three Mishnahs of our uh, of our parak or action elaboration of the three teachings of Shammai. What were they? It says Shammai Omer, Aset Torah Chakeva, Emor Meat Vase Harbe, Veve Mekavelet Kolad Hadam Besever Panim Yafot. So how does that lead into our in, into ours? We'll get to that in a second. But so Aset Torah Chakeva finds so that's what our that's what Rabban Gamliel is coming to explain. But then look at Shimon, Shimon Beno, right? So first Shammai says, right? So Aset Torah Chakeva, that's our mission. We'll talk about that in a second. Then he says, "Emor meat harbet." So if we skip our mission and go to the next one, which is speaking about that memra of Shammai, Shimon bno Omer, Kol yamai gadalti beinach hachamim, velo matzati laguf tov elashdika, velo hamidrash hu aikar elah hamase, vechol hamarbe dvarim mivichet. That's "Emor meat harbet." He's literally commenting on Shammai. It's amazing. I never would have thought of that, but the Levant one comment kind of kind of opens up. These final three Mishnayot in this parak, which don't, which seemingly don't have a Masora, but they in fact do have a Masora. It's just Shama Shami's Masora. So, uh, so there you go. It's very interesting. Okay, but but so how does how does our Mishnah explain? Um, how does our Mishnah explain Aset Torah Chakeva? So pretty straightforward. Yen uh, is saying Aset Torah Chakeva. How do we know that? Or how do we do that? Aset Torah Chakeva by Aset Lacharav. If you want to make your Torah Keva, make it um. Make your uh, sort of Torah a fixed practice, then you have to make for yourself a rabbi. You have to have a rabbi. Um, very interesting. But so, how does that help? So, here is very interesting. I, I'm sorry, what are the benefits of this actually? So, if we still like me, Mass Effect, how is a person going to get rid of Suffolk? How is he going to rid himself of doubt by having a rabbi to ask? Now, what's interesting is Yen Levanon opens this, um, these interpretations with an explanation of Shammai's teaching. Let's just say, what does Keva mean? A sitrat Keva. What's Keva? So he actually quotes a Gemara Brachot and a Chavtet, and it says like this: Rabbi Yezer Omer, Haoset Tfilato Keva, Ain Tfilato Tachanunim. A person who makes his Tfila Keva, right, fixed, his his prayers are not supplications. That's the Gemara there. But we're focusing in on this, what does that mean? What's what's my Keva? Um, that's what the Gemara says. The Gemara wants to know my Keva. What does that mean? So there are two potential answers. It's either kol tzit filat or dome love kamasa. That's one. Is to say, anyone who's 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 um whose prayers it's like a 
the thing of the Lucas Raj is Chok Kavu Alav Lahit Palel. He's like, he has to do it. What are you doing? Why? Not to have a conversation with God, not to check in, not to have a heart to heart. It's because, because I have to. I have a choice. That's Keva. Alternatively, what does that mean? It means there's nothing added to his field. There's no, nothing new in his uh, in his prayers. Usually, when we have conversations with people, there's something new you want to hear about. Well, how's your day today? There's even if it's very similar to the day before, which often happens, but there's something new. There's probably something new, like a new message, a new assignment, a new uh, uh, something, a new decision, a new thought. But no, here it's just keva. It's fixed. Kayom ken etmol kemachar. This what it was today is what it was yesterday. It's what it's going to be tomorrow. It's all the same. Now that's a negative thing for tefillah. That's a wonderful thing for learning. It's like a masa. You have to learn. Or it's like in the same way that you have something today, you had it yesterday, and you have it tomorrow. Your Torah is fixed. It's sturdy. Your Torah is keva. That's how we do that. And how do we get this? I think the Yen of Alman doesn't spell this out specific, uh, explicitly, but I think what he's saying is, if a person really wants that kind of level of clarity, then you, you need a rabbi. That is to say, sometimes you're, uh, you're unsure of your learning. You're not really so sure. And when you're unsure, sometimes it's not so nice to go and ask for a question. Right? The end of Brachot actually talks about how a person needs to humiliate himself uh, for, for a different tour. That is to say, it might sound silly or foolish or like an Amaret, but uh, the way they come into the is by asking, even if it makes you look stupid, that's the way to go. And so a person who kind of puts that burden on himself and gets that clarity, then that's fantastic. And moreover, once you have that level, level, level of clarity, then it's going to be much easier to remember. Because instead of having three doubts, it might go, might go A, might go B, might go C. It's C. The answer is C. That's it. That's all you need to remember. You could delete A and B from, from, your, from your lexicon. Anyone who's learned Gemara knows that sometimes the Gemara can go through a sugya for, for multiple daf. And then finally, like, okay, the halacha okay, is this. Okay, what do you think is easier to remember? The whole shakalatariya, all the gemaras, in terms of how we got to this halacha, or the final halacha? Of course it's easier to remember the halacha. That's how it is. So it's domen love kamasa. You have to go and, perhaps, you have to go and ask your rebbe. It's a burden sometimes. You don't want to, you don't want to sound silly. You don't want to do that. I remember when I was in law school, sometimes I was unclear about the law, and I was like, oh, maybe it'll, it'll, it'll become clear. I'll figure it out. It'll, it'll settle eventually. Then often when I did that, I walked into the exam without having clarified it, and guess what? Boom. That's what was asked. And of course, I was stuck. I didn't know what the answer was. Then I wasted all this time answering, and the, the professor could tell that I didn't know the answer. And so I think, again, the have deal. But similarly here, you want to know? You want to have this uh, this level of clarity? You want your Torah to be the same way it is today and yesterday and tomorrow? Get clarity. And sometimes that's like a masa. I believe that might be the way Yen Lebanon is explaining it. Okay. So, so how does this final... Um, this final um, Bava uh, in the Mishnah go. I used to say, Al Karbel Aser Al Do do not um do not make a habit of tithing by guesswork. So it says the Yen Lebanon, it's a uh, it's best to stick to the halacha. Let's say you might think it's good to go overboard, right? It's like oh, it's a nice thing, it's great. You're giving more uh, more tzedakah, more miser. No, don't do this regularly. He says better fulfill it as the Torah tells us to. Now that's where he leaves it. And true, this I wasn't entirely sure. Like well, what does that mean? How does that uh, how does it help us? What are we supposed to take away from this? Any examples? Yeah. Um, I heard a story. I can't remember who I heard it from. But it's a story about the altar of Vodka. So you know something good's coming. Let's just say, there's a Bachar who decided to bring in Shabbat early. We all know that you can bring in Shabbat early. Um, there are always certain limits. You can't bring it in too early. But you can bring it fairly early. There's a Bachar who really wants... And it's a mission to bring it in early. We're supposed to bring it in early. Even if it's two minutes. Um, of course, we bring it in the summer. We do it much earlier. But so there's this Bachar who really wants to bring it as early as he could do it. Huge hitter. Um, and the other Mr. Bachar said, no. He told this Bachar in his yeshiva, don't do it. Why? It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's being a Hadr Shabbat. It's amazing to see it as early as he can. It seems like it's a beautiful thing to do. Says the altar, no. Because now you know that you're doing a big, a, a big, a, a big hitter mitzvah. You're really beautifying this mitzvah. But as time moves on, they're going to be like, okay, it's like a normal hater. So just uh, nothing too special. They don't see it as a chumrah. It's a stringency. Okay. Lefi the halacha, the Jewish law doesn't require this of me, but I'm doing it to, uh, to beautify it. Or to, because I'm being strict. Then you'll eventually see it as just like, this is just the regular halacha, the normative halacha. 
then eventually start looking at other people and be like, you're violating Shabbos. Because you didn't bring it in the same time I did. So it says the altar, just avoid the whole story. Just bring it in when you're supposed to bring it in. Or whatever, it's a little like, like everybody else. Don't be too, don't go too far. Why? Because then, it's going to start twisting the way you see other people and you're going to lose sight of the of the uh, the beautification that you've actually taken on. So we'll leave it at that. Um, and we'll see you in two weeks.